I am joined here with the 2023 Edison Format Player of the Year. Easily. He's topped every event that he's entered in so far, with the exception of one online tournament with a bad tiebreak system. Back to back to back to back to back to back. Both RBETs, Deck Devastator. There was a local tournament the day before Nationals filled with cutthroat competition that he got second place in. And then at Nationals, he finishes X1 in Swiss and then made it all the way to the finals again. The best performing tournament player of this year. And he did it all with a deck that most people don't even include at the top of their tier list. Diva Hero. A deck that myself and others feel has no place in a bird-dominated meta, but he has found a way to make it work over and over and over again. This is Cairo King, also known as a true hero. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for bringing me on, and I hope throughout today's like podcast, I can spread news about Diva Hero and inspire more people to play the deck, and hopefully also more people can get into my mindset as to why I believe in Diva Hero so much. But, you know, just to say plainly, Happy to be here. Yeah, I, I had to, I had to have you on here at some point. I've met True Hero in person, and he is one of the most genuine, honest, great people to have around. He has an excellent mindset, excellent. I love his positivity. One of the most positive people I've ever been around. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. All right. So, starting off with this interview, what are the advantages of Diva Hero compared to other combo heavy decks like Zombies? Zombies is a lot more popular, and people you know respect it as a tier one deck, but they don't have Diva Hero on their radar. Advantages. Well, let's talk about zombies, right? Because that's the comparison. Mm -hmm. Zombies is a two-card combo deck. In order to pull off any of the plays, you need at least two cards. Now, of course, with Diva Hero as well, you need multiple cards to pull off combos. But the one advantage that Diva Hero has over zombies is that Diva Hero has the best top deck card in the format, which is Miracle Fusion. Even when Diva Hero is down and out, it's not reliant on the deck having two cards to make its best plays. Another advantage is when Diva Hero goes off, you're going to get OTK'd. Whereas when Zombies goes off, it always depends on a lot of different factors. They might be able to get you really low. And of course, as we know, Zombies do have the power to OTK you. That's why they're a tier one deck. But for sure, when Diva Hero goes off, your life points are dropping down to zero. Absolutely. And I'd also say that Diva Hero is uh, less weak to DD Crow than Zombies is. <laughs> so Zombies yeah, can, get that's actually true too. <laughs> can get their can get their I agree wholeheartedly. <laughs> you know, one, pe one thing that people like to do when they're up against Zombies, this is a little kind of tip for everybody listening, is they like to DD Crow Mizuki, right? Or the card that Mizuki is targeting. That's not a bad play at all. And the thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! is Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where every specific game is different. So no one fact holds true all the time. But generally, when you're going against zombies, if you hold your DD Crow for the Plague Spreader zombies, the deck doesn't do anything. All its best plays require them to make synchro monsters, right? Or summon Kaius, which is just a broken mini boss monster. But the best plays require them making synchro monsters and they need Plague. So just save the crow for the plague and zombies are going to be in bad shape. And as for crow versus diva hero, they fill the grave up with warders and heroes so fast that oftentimes the deck has multiple of them in the graveyard. And because banishing is not a cost for miracle fusion, but rather the effect, if you have a DD crow, it's not going to be very beneficial if you're up against a competent diva hero player. Of course, also sometimes the diva hero player has no choice but to activate miracle fusion when they only have one hero or one warder. But generally, if the hero players wait, then DD crow will not be much of an issue. Versus Zombies, you mentioned that you should save Crow for their Plague Spreader. With Value Turbo, I'm not scared of Crow if it's on a value piece, but I am terrified of Crow hitting my Plague Spreader, so I can imagine Zombies are just as terrified. <laughs> Let's see. Right. What would you say are Diva Hero's best and worst matchups, and why? The worst matchups are Value Turbo. <laughs> you were just talking about it, right? That's <laughs> the worst Turbo. matchup right there. I mean, I have lost against that deck in the finals, as everyone may know. And in other tournaments as well, that deck has taken me down. Now, the thing about that matchup is you have to know your cards like DD Crow, like we were just talking about. But the problem is, just like you said, you're not scared of DD Crow because it's actually a minus. You go minus one. But not only that, you have to worry about the traps. The traps are the most scariest part of the deck. And if you don't have a way to counter out all the traps, the deck will just beat you down. It's a beat down deck. So that is definitely one of the worst matchups. And it's the best oppression deck of the format. Let's not forget that. Diva Hero, the one card that it single-handedly loses to is Royal Oppression. When that card gets flipped, the amount of plays that the deck has becomes significantly reduced. It's the best oppression deck in the format. Bayou Turbo has always played double oppression. And 
it's hard. It's a very hard card to counter. Absolutely. With uh, what do you call it? It's banned for a reason. And what is Diva Hero's best matchup, would you say? Best matchup. Its best matchup is now a deck that no one really plays. I would say Quick Draw. Quick that draw. matchup <laughs> is free. And the reason why it's free is because, once again, the deck doesn't really do anything, right? So I know that kind of puts Diva Hero in a bad light, saying that its best matchup is a deck that doesn't do anything. But they go Summon Drill Warrior, and then you can just go Sided Games. Just summon False Adina when it banishes itself during the M phase, or summon Vanity Speed, and then it's like an auto win. I would say that with every matchup with Diva Hero, it's kind of an uphill battle. I never sit down at a table and I'm like, yes, I got this matchup. So there's no, like, I'd say, really matchup that Diva Hero completely wipes out the water. The type of decks that Diva Hero excels the most against are decks that take a long time to set up. And if Diva Hero has the time to set up, like I say, you're just going to get booty caned. Got you. Funnily enough, Quick Draw is actually what I would say one of the worst old meta decks of the format. I have oh, 10 terrible. cards. <laughs> yeah. I have 10 <laughs> cards that I side in versus Quick Draw, but I don't have any of them specifically for uh, Quick Draw. They're all, you know, yes. like leftovers from other cards. I'm just like, all right, I got 10 cards for you. I don't even prepare for you. <laughs> you know, yeah. the funny thing about Quick Draw, I like the Quick Draw deck, but it's not one of my favorite decks, but I do enjoy it, right? And I was entering, a, I entered rather in a Beast Mold Circus, Circuit Series tournament just for fun. And I played a Quick Draw deck one time, one time. And now on Format Library, Quick Draw is listed as one of my favorite decks. And I'm like, no, it's stained <laughs> on my record forever from a one time event. Oh, that's so funny. You're like, oh, no, please, guys, I, I'm not brain damaged. Look, yes. no, no. <laughs> And like, I topped RBT with Black Wings that you mentioned earlier. But because of, you know, the uh, issues between Format Library and Keegan, that wasn't reflected in my Format Library. Because I actually like Black Wings. They're my second favorite deck of the format. Yeah, but it's not there under four. It's not there under favorite decks. It's just three decks. It's Diva Hero, Quick Draw Plant, which shouldn't be there. And the last one is Agents, which I Agent. love me some Agents. So you were speaking about Black Wings, and that's actually going to lead to my next question. In a bird-dominated meta filled with DDV and Royal Oppression, what would you say is the reason that you're able to consistently come out on top despite these decks being present? Well, this is the thing I'm going to say about Black Wings. A lot of Black Wing players are not skilled at playing the deck. The reason why a lot of Black Wing players win is because they draw a whirlwind. We can start there. One of the reasons why I'm able to you know, excel is because a lot of Black Wing players simply aren't good. Now, for the Black Wing players that are good, the matchup is a bit of a challenge. Because like I said, Black Wings are a fast-paced deck, and Diva Hero struggles against fast-paced decks. Game one, unless you open up a strong first-turn Caius or a strong first-turn Future Fusion into level 8 Synchro with some back rows, it's going to be a very difficult set, very difficult game. Now, games two and three, things get a little bit easier because of my side deck choices. Recently, I've started siding Royal Decree. And that was actually to help me against the Venue Turbo matchup, but it also helps against Black Wings as well. Royal Decree completely shuts down both of those decks. Because I say a lot of time, you don't lose to Black Wings. You lose to their traps. Mm -hmm. You don't lose to Venue Turbo. You lose to their traps. Like the D-Prisons, the Mirror Forces, the Torrentials, the Royal Oppressions. You stop all that, then what is Venue Turbo? It's a vanilla deck that summons 24, 3, 25, and 28 attack monsters you know that's it same with black things you stop their traps and like yeah some of their monsters have some decent effects but like what really pushes them over the edge are their traps so you kill the support and then when you compare the monsters your deck is just better gotcha yeah my monsters are better than their monsters for sure <laughs> absolutely zero is one of the best monsters in edison format absolutely value turbo when i make my synchros i have to go minus one to make them so i always have to be thinking okay how do i get this uh minus one back whereas you you slam down a miracle fusion you're like all right time to get time to get to work so it's uh, a <laughs> yeah right, stop <laughs> going all right, so you said Royal Decree. Another thing I noticed is that Zero Dust Tornado is in your list. So many moons ago, I exclusively played Diva Hero and dropped at the deck because I felt like I didn't have enough defense versus Black Wings. Oppression, DDV, Whirlwind, and even Shura with Kalut felt way too overwhelming for me. I tried Royal Decree myself, but that limits the number of my own defensive traps I can play, like D-Prison and Bottomlets, which don't stop Whirlwind, which is a game winner by itself. How do you maintain control versus Black Wings at open Whirlwind? So... Let me first touch on what you mentioned about DDV. Mm -hmm. Actually, at Nationals, I played against a 
mirror match. Game two, my opponent goes summon Cataster, set two back rows. Now, obviously, I already know what play this is because I've done it so many times. He has deck devastation fire. Yeah. Am I opening six cards? Every last single one of them can be hit by deck devastation virus. I bring that story to attention to say this. Despite that odd scenario, deck devastation virus is not good against DB Hero. Because think about the monsters that you typically hit. You're mm-hmm. going to hit cards like Treeborn. You're going to hit Malicious. You're going to hit Plague. These are all cards we want in the grave. You're going to hit a Prodigy, right? Now, Prodigy is a combo card, which of course is better in the hand. But if it goes to the grave, now Miracle Fusion can become live. Same with sending Diva to the grave. Another combo card that of course we want in the hand, but if it's sent to the grave, now Miracle Fusion can become live. So pretty much all the monsters, they serve a purpose both in the hand and in the grave. So Deck Devastation Virus is not a choice that I would recommend against Diva Hero. Now, so I'm not worried about that aspect against Black Wings. Now, against Black Wings that open up Whirlwind, like I said, it's going to be a very difficult battle. It's going to be uphill. You just have to play the best Yu-Gi-Oh that you can. That's all it comes down to. Whirlwind games are uncontrollable because even when you do play your best, if your opponent top decks a monster, and Black Wing decks play so many monsters, right? They have Triple Soroko, Triple Bora, Triple Chora. That's nine cards. Can you really say one out of nine cards in the top deck? Like, no. Triple Kalut um, as one well. Their deck. Right, yeah, Triple Kalut. That's also another good one to draw with Roll on the field as well. So the point is, there are so many good cards that a Black Wing player can draw with Roll up on the field. You can't really say that it's a top deck. So you just have to play the best Yu-Gi-Oh that you can, which means avoiding Icarus attack, not playing in the Icarus attack. Having cards, hopefully, to stop their summons, such as Bottomless. And another point that you brought up, when you thought in Royal Decree, you often side out a lot of your defensive traps. However, trap versus traps, and traps will be sealed off because of Royal Decree. And then when you look at monsters, like I said, I generally believe the monsters in Diva Hero are better. They just flow so well. They have such synergy together. So yes, I have less defensiveness, but now I can afford to be more offensive because it's very difficult for actually for Black Wings to be offensive if they don't open up World Renshora. Okay, and you mentioned DDV not being good. So looking at your list, I see you only have nine monsters that are weak to DDV. Treeborn and Mali don't count. Do you side out mm-hmm. any of those nine monsters post-side for your other side deck cards not weak to DDV? When it comes to siding, it always depends on the matchup. There's no one card that I side out every single time, right? It's mm-hmm. always matchup dependent. Now, I would love to share like the specific cards that I side in and out But many people listening know that I already have a YouTube channel. And on my YouTube channel, I explain in great detail how to play the deck at a high level. But the only thing that I keep to myself is what I side in and out. Because I feel like at that point, if I'm telling you guys what to side out, you're just me. (laughs) You're just me, right? So I can't really tell you specifically what I side in and out, but I can give you a general idea of the right mindset that you need to have. So let's talk about Black Wings since that's the top of the town, right? Yeah. <laughs> Black Wings, they have a lot of monsters that do piercing. So naturally, you want to take out your monsters that will get hurt by the piercing damage, right? So I'm telling you if I'm telling you what card I would tie it out. So you need to be smart and think about the matchup. Let's talk about another common matchup, Frogs, right? Against Frogs, they don't play back row. So what card should you be siding out? You just need to think like this. There's no one card that I always side out every single time. It's always matchup dependent. Gotcha. You mentioned having uh, specific videos on uh, Diva Hero. Are there any particular ones that you wanted to uh, <laughs> have us take a look at? Any of them. Literally any just of them. watch any of them. All of them. Watch the whole channel. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. They're all, they're all <laughs> equally as good. All right, gotcha. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you made it this far so that I don't get discouraged and stop uploading.